In this episode, we'll take a look at the Aperture F7 on-camera LED light. Aperture has just announced a new on-camera light called the F7. It's a 7-inch LED light. It has color tuning capabilities. Let's take a closer look. Aperture was kind enough to send me a pre-production copy of the F7. I've been using it over the last two months in several of my videos. Now, I have a confession to make. First of all, I'm not really big on on-camera lights. They tend to look a little bit on the flat side, but they do have their purpose. For example, if you're doing electronic news gathering type things, reporting... Um, things where you have to run and gun and you don't have the luxury of setting lights up before you start shooting. On-camera lights are really, really helpful. But with this light, I found it super helpful for non-news gathering things as well, where I take the light off the camera and use it in a variety of situations. So for example, I did use it as a key light here when I was doing a review from my car. I've also used it several times as an accent light. So here, for example, because of the color tuning capabilities you see, it's a very blue accent light in the background. If you are running and gunning, but you have an opportunity to do a sit-down interview, you can also bounce the light off of other sources. Now, again, this is a relatively small light, so you're not getting a massive amount of light output, but it's good enough with most of today's modern cameras. You can bump it up to ISO 1600 and easily get enough light, even when you're bouncing it for a single-person interview. So let's run through the features. First of all, the pricing has not been set at the time I did this review. The things that I've heard is that they're aiming to get the price at under $100, we'll see where that lands, but nevertheless, it's going to be a relatively affordable LED light. In terms of its build, it's mostly plastic with inset brass quarter 20 taps on three sides so that you have a lot of flexibility in terms of where you can mount it, to your rig, to stands, to tripods, pretty much anywhere you can dream. The plastic is plastic. So this again is a very affordable light. It's not gonna have the all metal build of some of their more professional lights, but the plastic also on the flip side keeps it very lightweight, so that's a plus from that standpoint. If you drop it, will it survive the drop? Uh, depends on the drop. It is, again, it's plastic, but I think if you take care of it, it'll be fine. The controls are very simple. There's a very simple rocker power switch to turn it on and off. And then there's also this combination button dial that allows you to control the dimming and the color temperature. You press it in to switch to the other one and use the dial to set the setting for that parameter. One of the things I love most about this light are the various powering options. Number one, it does have a sled in the back for Sony NPF style batteries, and we'll talk about battery life in just a minute. But it also has a USB-C input, so you can power from USB battery banks, which is super helpful. It also has a DTAP input, so that if you are operating this on top of a camera that already has a cinema battery, like a V-Lock or an Anton Bauer, that'll have a DTAP output, and you can power this light from the same battery that's powering the camera. The color temp can be tuned from 3200 Kelvin, generally tungsten, all the way up to 9500 Kelvin, which is very cool blue. This is a huge feature because what this means in practical terms is that you can set the light to daylight, 5600 Kelvin, and you're getting the full output power of the light. A lot of other bi-color lights only go from 3200 Kelvin up to 5600 Kelvin, so when you're at 5600 Kelvin, you're not getting all the possible light output because it's only using half of the LEDs. Not so with the F7, when you're in the middle at 5600 Kelvin, daylight setting, you're actually getting output from all of the LEDs. So you're getting as much output as you can possibly get from a tiny little seven inch light. What's also unique about this relative to a lot of other LED lights is that you can dim it all the way down to 1%. So all the way from 1% up to 100%. So that's really nice if you need to really kind of fine tune things on a low key shoot. Now, how does the F7 do in terms of color quality? Let's take a look. We're going to use CRI. Now, I realize that CRI is not the perfect measure of color quality. However, it is a standard. It is something that we use on a lot of other measurements and is used in a lot of other places. So we're going to go ahead and use it, recognizing that it isn't perfect. At 5600 Kelvin, the CRI came in at 97, and the secondary color patches, which are not included in the CRI calculations, were also quite good for a low-cost light like this. There was a bit of a magenta color cast, so you will need to compensate for that either by using a gel or by doing a custom white balance. At 3200 Kelvin, the CRI was 98 with a slight green cast, which is a little interesting. Again, same thing there, use a gel or custom white balance. Up at 9500 Kelvin, things were not quite as good, but nevertheless, that is generally something that you would use as an accent light where it's not as critical to have perfect color rendering. Overall, I think it was a really great showing for a very affordable light. 
Next up, let's take a look at flicker. Now, flicker is something that happens, especially when you shoot at higher frame rates and higher shutter speeds. It is something you generally aren't going to do with a tiny little light like this, but nevertheless, we wanted to test it just to see where it fell out. What I found is that when I shot at nearly one two thousandth of a second with the F7 dimmed to 85%, I'm not seeing any flicker. And in fact, also when we did a variety of other tests at 24 frames per second, we also didn't see any flicker there. So at the kind of standard frame rates and shutter speeds that go along with that, that we're typically going to be using, I don't think that flicker is an issue at all with the F7. How does the F7 do in terms of battery life? Well, the F7 does not come with a battery. You're responsible for supplying that. However, just for reference, we put a Sony NPF 970 style battery on the F7, turned it on to full power at 5,600 Kelvin. So that's the full output power it can possibly produce. We were able to keep going on that battery for two hours and 57 minutes. So nearly three hours uh, at full power. That's pretty impressive. Most camera top lights come with a ball head that allows you to connect it to a cold shoe and then adjust the angle of the light. The F7 is no exception. However, the F7 has a much higher quality ball head than I've seen included with any other budget light ever. A lot of those are really frustrating on the other lights where the ball head is really just poor quality um, and the little handle to tighten it is really small and it slips over time. Just not a great setup. With the F7, you get a really kind of beefy ball head that seems like it'll hold up really nicely over time. The F7 comes with this very small soft case. It's small. It's lightweight and it's really easy to take with you pretty much anywhere you need to go. It fits all of the different pieces, the light, the little diffusion panel, the cable, and the ball head. Now, one thing that I think in my experience is becoming more and more important as you look at different products is the customer service of the company that has manufactured the product. What do they do in terms of standing behind the product? And I think that's something kind of interesting with Aperture. Aperture is a little company that has exploded in the last three years. And I think at this point they realize customer service is really critical. And they have a little bit of catch-up work to do on that, I will say, I think, but I think they're doing a really good job moving that direction. Let me give you two anecdotes. Number one, my brother Kerry has two of the LS1S professional grade uh, LED panel lights. One of the AC adapters went bad on those. He contacted Aperture and they sent him an entirely new LS1S light kit. Second example, the 300D started shipping late last year, early this year, and what Aperture realized after they started shipping the first lot of them is that the CRI wasn't quite as high as they had hoped. And so what they did is they actually shipped out to all of the owners of the 300D a replacement filter assembly along with the torque screw and instructions on how to replace it. And once you put that on, your CRI went up to 97 from about 95. So a pretty nice improvement there. And they just sent those out. So that's a pretty impressive thing for a company to do. One of the other things I think that some of us have experienced is that as Aperture has launched new products that look really awesome, and in fact are really awesome, getting your hands on a copy of them has been a little bit of a challenge. And Aperture has struggled a little bit to keep up with the demand for their new products, which is an interesting kind of situation. It's a good sign from the standpoint that they're producing products that we see as very helpful and very valuable for our work. Um, on the other side, they're struggling to keep up with the manufacturing, but I think they're making some strides in that area as well. You have to keep in mind, this again, it's a very small company that's just sort of exploded over the last three years, so they have a lot of ramping to do. Keep in mind that even Apple and Samsung can't keep up with the demand of their new products. Even though they've been at it for years, they have a lot more capital, a lot more cash sitting around, and a lot more experience. So I think Aperture will get there. So overall, there's a look at the Aperture F7. My take on it, if you need an on-camera light, this is a really good option. If you want a small light that you don't plan to use on camera, this is a great option as well. I really like using it as a very portable light. So for example, when I did the review several weeks back in the car, it was super nice to be able to set that up on top of the dashboard and just shoot. And also it's really nice to use as an accent light. Another nice thing is that there's no fan on the F7. So you're not going to interfere with the audio capture of any sort. It's just small, convenient, and really useful, much more useful than I had anticipated. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you have not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. And if you'd like to be notified each time a new episode comes out, go ahead and click on that bell icon. Talk to you soon.